am Erica Smith, host of Alternative Cinema News. I'm coming to you live on location from the Chiller Theater Festival in Parsippany, New Jersey, where lines are going around the block with people eager to come in and meet their favorite celebrities for autographs and pictures. And I'm sitting with Rico Browning, who's famous for many, many water sequences in films. Uh, most notably, perhaps, as doing the underwater sequences as the Gill Man in The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Did you have any idea when you um, shot that film that it would be such a huge success and that you would be so connected with it for many years after? No. I don't think anyone that worked on it thought it was going to do anything. It was a B-class movie, and I didn't hear about how popular it was until about 20 years after it was made. I started getting letters from people asking for pictures, and um, I started doing these shows several years ago, and I can't believe how many people still think it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a great movie. I've, I really, it's one of my favorites. Um, what besides that character are you, do people most recognize you for? What other series or film? I created a show called Flipper. We made two features, four years of television, and then after that another feature. I specialize in shooting underwater sequences for movies. Uh, I started directing Topside when I did the uh, Flipper series. Okay. And then we did a show called Gentle Ben, about a boy and a bear. And I did another feature I created called Salty, about a sea lion. By the cemetery. I'm Katriona McCall, Chiller Theatre 2008, and you're watching me on Alternative Cinema News. Hello, I'm Erica Smith for Alternative Cinema News, and I'm here live from the Chiller Theatre Convention with the beautiful Miss Misty Monday. Hello. Greetings, salutations, hi, howdy. <laughs> uh, so you're here promoting the Erotic Werewolf of London. What was it like making that movie? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, seeing as how I've been in like 900 films and we shot it like eight years ago, I believe it has something to do with a werewolf and some lesbians. Sounds fascinating. I'll have to check that out. Uh, what about, we've been in several films together. What was your favorite film that we made together? Well, I think that in Bite Me, you were hilarious. <laughs> um, so that's my favorite role that you're in, especially in the little bunny hat thing. And when you talk like this, and you're really funny. Um, but then it was really sad when you got burned with the cigar on your forehead. That was really sad. Do you remember that? Should we tell that anecdote? Yeah, why don't you tell it? OK, well, yeah, I think it, it was like during like the uh, strip club brawl. And we had choreographed this whole big fight scene thing, and uh, some dumbass had a cigar hanging out of their mouth when poor Erica had to like jump off of the stage and they were supposed to catch her, and the guy basically like extinguished his cigar on your face. <laughs> well, that's not, that's a little exaggerated. Actually, I was like, it was like a fight scene and he was punching me, fake punching me, and as he did that, the cigar ash, I guess, went in my head. And I felt it, but I was like, the show must go on. And I did the scene and finished it. Bullshit, she totally cried. <laughs> I did cry, but it burned my hair off. What about um, Splatter Beach? Was that fun to make? It was fun to make. It's a funny little little film. Yeah, it was good times. But um, I think that we're both fabulous and sinful, and that's my favorite film that we're in together. Yeah, now that you mention it, I like that one a lot. You're, you're really mean in that. So do you have any projects coming up that you'd like to talk about? No. No, I don't know. I'm kind of taking it easy right now, and I'm uh, working on actually maybe potentially directing some stuff and starting a production company with a friend of mine who uh, acquired a bunch of lights and equipment and cameras and whatnot. So i um, trying to get more on the creative end of directing and producing stuff. I saw, uh, I think it was your first directorial effort. Was this your first one, Voodoo and Blues? Um, no, that wasn't my first film that I did. This was, Voodoo and Blues was um, a short film that I actually did for school 
that was so incredibly fabulous, we put it out on DVD. My directorial debut of films that are released is actually Lustful Addiction. That's the first feature film that I ever directed. But this is actually my baby because this was like an actual 16 millimeter shot on film that I did everything I directed, produced, and starred in. So edited everything. Yeah, that was really, really spooky. I saw it. Creepy, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you very much, Misty. And uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of the weekend here at Chiller. Likewise, darling. Hey, everybody. I'm Henrik Kuto, and I'm here at the glorious Parsippany Hilton in Parsippany, New Jersey. Imagine that at the Chiller Theater Convention 2008. And I'm promoting Camp Motion Pictures and their newest horror releases. That's right, the Camp Double Feature, which features Vampire Embrace and Through Dead Eyes. And, of course, Blood and Sex Nightmare from Bloody Earth Films. Now, I wanted to mention something real quick, because if you like your horror like I do, and that's campy, cheesy, a little bit of goodness, I, I really have to recommend the Camp Horror Double Feature, because, in all honesty, how many movies do you get with James Doohan playing a chain-smoking former police officer with an eye patch on? How many? It's less than three. We also have the critically ashamed Blood and Sex Nightmare, brand new horror, and I gotta tell you, I have not seen a movie that equated to its title so well since that art film, uh, Man Sleeping. I think that's what it was called, Man Sleeping. Uh, believe it, it was a man sleeping. So uh, I'm here for Camp Motion Pictures, and check out the new titles, alternativecinema.com.